Delegates from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries have discussed whether to limit oil production, but they weren't able to reach an agreement at their latest meeting. Iran insisted on individual targets. The country has been increasing output since Western sanctions were lifted. That has made relations with major oil producers. Saudi Arabia tense. Iran, they still want to produce the, their pre-sanction pre uh, quantity. And also we have another country is, uh, is now is, uh, is missing from the market, Libya. So to, to come up with a number, it's very difficult to do. The meeting follows a disagreement at a gathering in December and another in April that included non-OPEC members. For more on the meeting and its impact on the markets, I earlier talked to our senior economic correspondent, Reiko Sakurai, who's been following the moves. I first asked her why OPEC members failed to once again come up with an agreement to control output. The meeting ended an hour or more earlier than scheduled without much heated debate. And that shows the sense of crisis appears to have somewhat waned among the member nations. WTIQ prices dipped to $26 per barrel in January, but they were picking up to around $50 recently due to lower production in the U.S., political turmoil in Venezuela and Nigeria, and a recent wildfire in Canada. That led to a loss of momentum toward more cooperation. OPEC's de facto leader, Saudi Arabia, had indicated intended to seek an agreement and demonstrate OPEC unity. But Iran was not persuaded, and no deal was reached. Now, how is this affecting markets at this well, time? Well, crude prices fluctuated by more than 1% immediately after the meeting, showing that investors are getting nervous. And many analysts think that the recent uptick in oil prices is just temporary. I talked to Hiroyuki uh, Takai this morning. He's the president of Sumitomo Corporation Global Research. Uh, Takai noted that inventories of crude are piling up and does not expect prices to rise anytime soon. He thinks that it will take time, maybe as early as within this year, but more likely until early next year before inventories start coming down. Some are say, saying OPEC as an organization is growing uh, a lot weaker. Are times changing to a point where this cartel no longer has much influence, do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, critics say that oil cartel is becoming just a talking shop recently. Uh, Saudi Arabia and some members are trying to restore the sense of unity in OPEC, but are failing in the effort to restore their function of controlling prices. OPEC's indecision is impacting the market in ways that are stark contrast to its former dominance. Japan's transport ministry has launched an investigation at Suzuki Motor over its manipulation of fuel efficiency data. Ministry officials have questioned the company's senior officials and people in charge of development. The investigators started work at company headquarters in Shizuoka Prefecture on Friday. They checked the content of the automaker's in-house report on the fabrication submitted to the ministry earlier in the week. Suzuki has admitted it failed to perform the required outdoor mileage test for 26 models. Instead, it submitted data for indoor tests. Over 2 million vehicles are affected. The company's internal probe has found that an auto development department started the wrongdoing in 2010. Suzuki says it retested all the models using the required methods, and the results turned out better. The company says it will continue to sell the affected models. Checking the markets, Tokyo's Nikkei average ended positive for the first time in three days. Before the details, we go to our business reporter, Phoebe Amoroso, at the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Phoebe. Investors were relieved that oil prices stayed stable during Tokyo trading hours, even after the OPEC failed to set a ceiling on output. The Nikkei average ended about half a percent higher, closing at 16,642. On the week, the Nikkei lost about 1 percent. The broader topics rose 0.4 percent. Looking at individual stocks, the standout performer was fast retailing operator of clothing store Uniqlo. Its shares rose nearly 7 percent after data showed domestic sales in May rose almost 6 percent from a year earlier. And shares of Takata gained 1.6 percent. That's on reports that a Chinese auto parts maker may invest in the troubled airbag manufacturer. Some negatives, though, from component makers linked to Apple products on continued concerns about sluggish global smartphone sales. TDK fell 1.5% and Alps Electric was down more than 3%. Now, the focus next week will be on how Tokyo markets react to the US jobs data released on Friday. And of course, the UK's potential exit from the EU will keep uncertainty levels high until the referendum later this month. I'm Phoebe Amoroso from the Tokyo Stock Exchange. 
Phoebe, thanks very much for that report. Other markets in the Asia Pacific region also extended in the positive and cautious trading. Over in China, the Shanghai composite, uh, composite uh, gaining by almost half of 1%. 29.38 was the closing uh, number. Gains were limited, however, as a private sector survey showed uh, the service PMI for May had dropped to a three month low. Sydney's SP ASX 200 index jumping by eight tenths of 1%, 53.18 uh, for the close. Rebounds in oil and other commodities pushed up resource related shares, but the index fell on the week, snapping a seven week rally. Hong Kong's Hang Seng index gaining by four tenths of 1%. It climbed to a five week high with most shares ending in the positive. Singapore also gaining by half 1%. Here's a look at some of the other business stories we're following. A Japanese government survey shows that real wages for workers in inched up in April. Labor ministry officials say the average income was about $2,500. That's up 0.6% from a year earlier in yen terms when adjusted for inflation. The officials say the rise was due to a base pay hike and lower consumer prices. U.S. credit rating agency Moody's has questioned the Japanese government's postponement of a planned consumption tax hike. It says the delay further calls into doubt the country's ability to meet its fiscal goals. The agency says the decision together with a fiscal stimulus package will be a negative factor when it assesses those bonds. Japanese corporations are hoping to get back into Cuba. Representatives from about 30 firms attended a business meeting in Havana this week. Japan was Cuba's largest trade partner outside of the Soviet bloc in the 1970s. The trade dwindled after the Caribbean country's economy slumped due to U.S. sanctions. Cuba's recently restored diplomatic ties with the United States and is now inviting foreign investment with lower taxes and other steps. That's a look at business news. I'm going to leave you with the markets.